Today's reading scripture is Philippians 4, 8 to 9. Finally, Philippians 4, 8 to 9. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things, the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. After Golden Light Choir's praise, we'll watch God, Senior Pastor's video sermon, Deficiencies of Body, the sixth session. Brothers and sisters in Christ, church members, branch churches, local sanctuaries, and all the church members in the world, and to see and viewers. Through these messages on the deficiencies of the body, I'm explaining the things that we have to realize and correct to become as perfect as the Lord. The efficiency of the body refers to the state where you lack the basic mental or physical ability or the state where you have significantly different emotions than other people because you have not gone through the processes that you should have gone through the steps of seeing, feeling, and acting. Most of the law level, basic deficiencies of the body will be resolved to the extent that you cast off evil from your heart. Your deficiencies will disappear to the extent that you learn the manners of the Lord, seek others' benefits, and follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. How can a deficiency of body disappear by the work of the Holy Spirit? It was 1988. Whenever I touched something, there was static. When I touched the microphone, when I touched the car door, there was a static. I could even see the sparkling light. When I touched the water, whenever I tried to shake hands, so I avoided shaking hands. No matter what I touched, there was a static. I couldn't understand. I prayed, but it didn't work. It was for about six months past when an idea hit, up, uh, hit upon me. There must be a reason. Isn't God doing it to me on purpose? I had an idea like this. Then I recalled something. When the Lord walked, nobody could hear him. There was no sound at all. Isn't the reason that God wanted to correct me with such things. When I looked back upon myself for the last six months, I was approaching slowly to the door and touching the doorknob slowly. I was opening and closing the car door gently and slowly. I was changed. I thought to myself, is it why? I realized it. When the stat static disappeared, there was no more static. When I touched the microphone, when I shook hands, there was no static. For about six months, I was changed. I did everything gently and slowly, opening and closing a door, shaking hands, touching things. It was when I made it my habit that God allowed me to realize what it was all about. 
When I realized it, it was gone. If I had not realized it, it might have continued. I should have realized earlier it would have been useless if I had realized it before I made it my habit. After I made it a habit, God then made me realize what was going on. That was, that was it. Once it was done like this, I could make something or correct something. Whenever I realized something, it was not a free thing. It could be done by the help of the Holy Spirit. And this is the process to enter whole spirit. I already have already entered uh, the state of the whole spirit, but you have to go through this kind of process to resemble the Lord completely. Your deficiencies will disappear to the extent that you learn the manners of the Lord, seek others' benefits, and follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you can realize and cast off the deficiencies that you could not realize before, then it was a great help in going into spirit. Let us consider the specific examples of deficiencies of the body and the, the ways to resolve them. Some have deficiencies in emotions or thinking. They lack the ability to think from the viewpoint of the other people. Those who lack experience in social interaction might have mindsets that are self-centered. They don't intend to seek their own benefit, but rather they want to seek others' benefit. But sometimes, they cause discomfort for others, they do not read the mood surrounding them, or they don't underst understand from others' standpoints and embarrass them. It happens quite a lot, doesn't it? They think that other people like what they like, and they dislike what they dislike. For example, suppose a man likes fish and eats a lot of food at every meal. Also suppose there is a woman who doesn't like fish and she eats only a small amount of food. If this man can't emphasize with her taste, he might keep suggesting that she have more fish, saying it is very delicious. The woman has had enough, but he urges her to eat more, saying, don't you like the food? You should eat more. If you eat with such a person, and if you're in a lower position in the business or social hierarchy, or if you're being treated as a guest, it would be very difficult for you to refuse. Suppose you like giving gifts to others, but you want to give only what you like, it means your mindset is self-centered. You give gifts that you would find yourself useful, and gifts that are the colors and styles that you like. And if the other person does not seem to like it, you might even be disappointed thinking, I've given him something precious, but he doesn't even appreciate it. You don't realize the fact that you are thinking only from your point of view. Even in faith, some people receive unnecessary persecutions because of such deficiencies. They delightly deliver the gospel, but can't open others' hearts for rather they cause them to close their hearts. Sometimes those who do not realize the value of the gospel would rather be disruptive and persecute the working of the gospel rather than accept it. Even though the preaching might provide them with good things, they build more walls of sin instead. That is why Matthew 7, 6 says, do not give what is holy to dog. Should, give, should you give it to dog or not? And do not throw your purse before swine. Do you have to throw them, throw them to swines or not? It is useless to them, isn't it? But people throw such holy things to dogs and swines. Do dogs know they are precious? 
He just tried to chew them and trample on them. They're just curious what they are. Swines were trampled on them and put them under their feet. Well, nowadays, pigs are gone in a cleaner place than before. But in the past, the place was not clean. It was mixed with many dirty things from swines. It smelled foul as well. Swines ate there and slept there. 먹고 먹기만 배만 부르면 저 뒹굴고 거기서 But giving such precious and clean things to dogs and swines it is not to give such a holy word to them. Or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. When you preach the gospel, some people call you bad names. They even call God bad names. They insert your church and persecute your church. Don't go to such people, the Bible says, otherwise they will build a wall before God. It may be the same with some of your family. But it doesn't mean you must not preach the gospel at all to those who trample on the gospel, as dogs and souls trample birds under their feet. When the present the gospel I don't make a situation that allows for rejection or persecution. You should preach the gospel wisely so that they will not persecute you, not insert God in churches. You should not preach the gospel even though they just persecute you and call you bad names. In order to do that, you should receive the wisdom of goodness and understand the other's viewpoint. You should be able to touch their heart with true service and love. For example, if, you, if the wife wants to evangelize her husband, she should serve her husband more than before according to what he likes and change herself in a way that he can feel the true love. She should understand what his standpoint of thinking is and know about what he likes and how he can move his heart. She should leave such a strong impression that the husband would think she has changed so much since he began to go to church. Since such a, a lovely wife wants me to come with her, why don't I? Then you can evangelize seven or eight out of ten if not all of them. But a wife who was a self-centered mindset cannot move her husband hard. For example, she thinks like, I'm so busy taking care of everything, and now I'm even busier with the church work. I can't help but neglect my husband a little bit. When such a woman talks about how good it is to go to church, her husband wouldn't, her husband won't listen. Also, just because she likes them, she puts the church newsletters, books, and pictures here and there in the house. Her husband is already upset because he feels the church has taken away his wife. And if he sees those things that she displayed, he would be upset even more. Thus, he would persecute her and dis disrupt her attending church. The wife will also be disappointed. She thinks from her viewpoint, I'm only delivering the truth, he should go to church and receive salvation. I make only good suggestions, but why is he treating me like this? Then both of them feel uncomfortable. It's not just between the husband and the wife. The same principle applies between children and parents. If you understand the viewpoints of others and serve them with good wisdom and the truth, you can quickly have all family members accept the gospel. When you teach about the gospel, you should not just talk about what you like, but you should try to speak about things that others might be interested in. To go into spirit, you have to broaden your heart by considering and understanding more people. Let me present an allegory. Suppose there are three children playing together. 
One of them is a child you like, and you are now familiar with the other two. You had a candy in your pocket, so you gave it to the child you like. Now, how do the other two children feel about it? As, of you, as for you, you just gave a piece of can candy to the child you like, but you never intended to hurt the feelings of other two children. But if you just think from your point of view and are able to consider the feelings of the other children, then your actions were not really good. If you just think I did it with a good intention, you can't change yourself. If you insist upon your own opinions, other people will feel that you are very stubborn and feel that they can't have a meaningful conversation with you. Let me give you another example. Suppose there is a good speaker for the elders' meeting. There is a woman, say a leader, who wants to listen to the speaker and sits in the front seat. It's an elders' meeting, or for anniversary events, if a cell leader or a group, cell group leader sits in newcomer seats or VIP seats just because they want to watch the performance, it presents an embarrassing situation for many people. If they think I didn't commit any sin, I just try to receive more blessings. It isn't my problem if others feel they have to say something about it. This attitude shows the efficiencies of the body. It does not mean you have to test how the wind blows all the time. It means you should have appropriate behaviors according to time and location uh, so that you will not cause any discomfort to other people. Let me ask you one more thing about the seats. There are many suggestions regarding the seats for the worship services. It is often said the newcomers or new believers are offended because of not being seated in the main sanctuary. Some church members who should know better reserve seats for their friends and stop others from sitting in those seats. In some cases, even when the seats have been already occupied, there are still some members who ask the people who are sitting there to move. They say that they are the ones who always sit on that particular spot, sit on that particular spot. When this kind of situation is encountered, some of the newcomers become offended and go back home. And uh, they, they go back home because they don't have a place to park their car. If you are one of those doing this, you should know that you are being an embarrassment to this church. The shepherd and you are hindering the revival of the church. You should realize that because of you, one soul just got stumbled. It is said that you would better be cast into the sea with a heavy mist on around your neck. The man came to church after long fasting and prayers by others. You made him leave so easily. It becomes a wall between you and God. Even after you made a wall before God, you don't even remember what just happened. You don't recall. You don't remember what you did. When you become ill, you don't know why. Even after you made one soul tremble, you can't repent. Say, say you catch cold or flu. You don't catch cold usually, but you catch cold now. You don't know what the problem is. Just say, I caught cold because the weather is so cold. You have no idea why you are not protected. You undergo tri trials like this for a week until you become normal. You undergo a trial which you don't need to because you are not protected. What a pity it is in the sight of God. It is a duty even for the elders who have reserved designated seats that they should yield their seats if there are newcomers looking for a seat. 
who will come and take your seat. They are not our members. They know you. They don't take your seat. So when someone is sitting on your seat, you should say, looking for a seat, here it is. Take the seat. You should yield your seat and have a seat somewhere else. This is truly an exemplary elder. How lovely he must be to the eyes of God the Father. And if the church members want to take even the seats reserved for the newcomers, or even though they don't have reserved seats for themselves, they should feel sorry before God. It is especially true when we have special events. What if you have given a party and invited precious guests to your house? Do you sit on a couch in the best spot and tell the guests to, to sit on the floor or in one of the corners? Not just elders and senior deaconesses, but also anyone from junior deaconesses is up. You are owners of the church who participate in church workers' devotional service. You are the host and hostesses who are supposed to serve the, the guests, especially those senior deaconesses who are aged should be able to take care of all church members who self-sacrifice like a mother. I believe you will be able to be more confident before God when you can yield better seats in the main sanctuary so that our people can receive more blessings. Suppose you've been praying for family evangelism for a long time, and you brought your family members to the church for the first time, then wouldn't you be willing to yield all the good things so they can be blessed? I hope you will be able to think from others' viewpoint first and consider the benefit of the kingdom of God and the church. Brothers and sisters, if you can realize you didn't understand others' standpoint and made a mistake after you didn't think of others, it is not such a serious deficiency. If you can figure it out soon enough and fix it, it is not serious. If you can take others' advice and fix it. But if you do not realize your shortcomings, even after acting in a self-centered manner, or if you can understand others' viewpoint even though other people advise you to, then it is a problem. When you run a business or work for a company, you are a senior and you have conflicts with your subordinates. They should obey you, but peace is broken. Then you must look back upon yourself. Am I behaving right or right? Am I treating people already? When you think you are right and others are rude to you, they don't make sense to you. If you think like this, the problem can't be solved. No, it happens not once, but with some others as well. Then you should think again. You should look back upon yourself. Aren't I bad? Aren't I a small vessel, too small to embrace them? When I understand others well, you think you are correct. You think you behave okay, but to others' eyes, you are not. To others' eyes, you don't behave. You should be stubborn. You should not stick to your ideas if there are quite many you break peace with. You think you are all right. I treat others well. I serve them well. Well, that's what you think. You should realize this, repent, and turn back, then peace will not be broken. If peace was broken before, you can make it up and keep peace later on. In this case, what should you do? If you can understand others' viewpoint, even though other people advise you to, what should you do? You can't just give up on yourself, thinking that you can empathize with others and you are born like that. You should constantly try to consider the heart and standpoint of other people with prayers. When you pray, you should put yourself into others' shoes and make efforts, asking for the help and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Don't choose your own wisdom 
wisdom or our thoughts. You should seek the help and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. You must think in goodness, otherwise you can't solve problems. Think in goodness, understand others with a heart of goodness, and put yourself into their shoes. And in this case, what should you do if you can't understand others' viewpoint, even though other people advise you to? What should you do? You cannot just give upon yourself thinking that you cannot emphasize with others and you are born like that. You should constantly try to understand the heart and the standpoint of other people with prayers. When you pray, you should put yourself into others' shoes and make efforts, asking for the help and wisdom for the Holy Spirit. Don't use your own wisdom or thoughts. You should seek the help and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. You must think in goodness, otherwise you can solve problems. Think in goodness, understand others with a heart of goodness, and put yourself into their shoes. Then the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will teach you everything and fill your deficiencies. You should know that to feel such deficiencies, what you see, hear, and learn is important. If you try to learn and remember the good things and hold on to the good information that you come across in your daily lives, it is profitable for you to being, in being able to fill up your deficiencies. There are some people who feel hardships because you have deficiencies and experiences that are needed for social life. They do not have deficiencies in terms of personality, but they do not know, I mean, they don't really know how to behave and conduct themselves in certain situations. They feel difficult interacting with their seniors, talking with a group of people, how to act properly at a funeral or wedding, or even buying some things. You can overcome such deficiencies and experiences when you pray without ceasing and try to learn them. Suppose there is a person who is making some props for a church event and within her limitations of knowledge and experience, she makes combinations of the most beautiful colors for a person who I mean, a person with more knowledge and experience can make better combinations of even more beautiful colors. I mean, there is a limit to a person's knowledge and experience. There are always people who excel you in knowledge or experience. But you shouldn't make combinations of colors and think mine is the best. There could be better combination or even better one than that. And if this first church worker thinks that her ideas that came from within her limited knowledge or past, it is a deficiency. You should ask for others' others' opinions with an open mind. She has to continue to see, hear, and learn more things. Let me give you another illustration. Suppose there is a housewife who has been doing housekeeping for a long time, but she can still learn many things from other housewives. When she serves a glass of soda, she could just serve it in a general use cup or she could use a pretty glass with a flower decoration together with a source to serve it. If you can remember what she has seen in other households and restaurants or magazines and apply them in her life, it would be very useful. You might have a deficiency if you have never seen or heard anything about what kinds of dishes you have to use for certain kinds of food. 
For example, suppose you are serving coffee for your guests and you put sugar in a big luxurious bowl. You do that in consideration of the guests. And it is to accommodate those who tend to use a lot of sugar and they don't have to ask for more sugar. But even though you are considering the guests and the bowl is luxurious, it is all to serve sugar in such a big bowl. You can serve an amount of sugar for each guest and prepare some extra. You should find appropriate ways to serve them. Only if you try to learn and change yourselves, even in these small things, you can improve yourselves. Even for small things, you should continually learn from others as to how they speak, walk, and behave, and how they dress, and how they interact with others. But I'm not saying that you have to make a framework of thinking that you must do certain things in a certain way only. Moreover, you must never look down on others thinking that they are ill-mannered and others are not be behaving in a way that you consider appropriate. I'm just saying you should know at least the basics about the generally accepted behaviors and what is, what is more beautiful according to the occasion and place. If you know various things, you can adjust yourself according to the purpose. But if you are lacking in knowledge, it will cause embarrassment. Next, giving up easily and getting discouraged sometimes comes from deficiencies of the body. If you have an innately negative and passive attitude, and if you should encounter hardship, your first thought is to just give up. You could consider the ways to overcome and think that you can't do it by the power of the Lord, but instead, you just give up thinking, how can I overcome this situation? I can't handle this. You do something, but it doesn't go well, so you give up and do something else. If, again, this does not go well either, you abandon it too and go on to start something else again. As you keep on repeating this cycle, you pile up negative thoughts that you can't do anything well. If you are lacking in willpower, patience, self-control, and concentration, you have to work to develop and strengthen these abilities before you can go into spirit. As I explained in the last session, without proper training in your childhood, you could be lacking in determination and patience to achieve your goal. Even in the case of the unbelievers, they failed to quit drinking or smoking or in their diets because they lack such strength in their de determination. There are people who have failed to develop patience and self-control from their childhood. If they make up their mind to be on a diet, they fail. They fail this year, try to do it again next year. After year, after Year after year, they repeat the same cycle. Why do they repeat the cycle and not achieve their goal at once determination? It's because they fail. Such is the case with our studies as well. Not long after you make a determination, you give up. Also, when it comes to studying English, you're determined to study English in a specific way, but end up giving it up. In a few months, or easily switch from one textbook to another. If you hear someone saying, wow, this book is really good, you are quickly to switch to that book. Can your English improve if you change books so often like that? Once you choose the textbook, 
You have to totally master that book. You have to do more than just being able, being able to read the sentences there. I mean, you have to study until you memorize the words and sentences in the book. You keep studying with one book until you are able to recall the expressions there immediately. If you quickly switch to another book as soon as you finish reading the book once, your English all improve. There are necessary words, phrases, expressions you have to memorize. That way you can improve your English. Without that process, no matter how many books you read, the level of your English will not increase. Same with being on a diet. You can just cut, out, cut down on the amount of food, and then no doubt you will lose weight. Your body reacts exactly to the amount of food you reduce, but the problem is you fail. They make up their mind to be on a diet, but they can't stop themselves when they see certain food they like. You make up your mind to be on a diet, but there is a temptation coming to you. Let's suppose you have dinner meeting, your determination is broken, you end up overeating there. How, and how could you possibly reduce in a diet? There needs to be patience. Although you are a decisive person, it's no use if you don't have patience. This is also a deficiency. You should have determination to carry out your decision. Without that, you fell again and again. Also, when it comes to studying, if you have a mindset of I will study hard from tomorrow, you can study well. You have to make up your mind to study hard from today. Say about prayer. They determine today to study hard, but they want to watch movies and play video games more, so they can focus on studying. They think they'll begin again tomorrow, but when the next day comes, they postpone it again. Even in this world, people see positive thinking, self-control, determination, and concentration are important factors to a successful life. Yes, if you equip yourselves with such qualities, you can succeed in life. As you get rid of these deficiencies of body, you can be recognized and loved among people. It's impossible to have no deficiencies at all, but you can see that students with less deficiencies can be loved and recognized by their friends and their teacher and become a leader among other students. Same for our adult members. To the extent they have deficiencies, they can't gain others' trust especially other pastors. They should definitely be loved by church members, but with a lot of deficiencies, it is hard for the pastors to be loved by them. So pastors should make sure to have no deficiencies to be loved by members. I will continue the message next week. Oh,